14-foot paddleboard. It's a wood paddleboard, uh, it's a comey plywood, and right now we're in the process of applying fiberglass to the top inside of the deck. Uh, which you see over here are the sides of the boat that have been clamped, and the project right now is to get this built and use it. How, how thick does it wind up being? Oh, that, the board itself? Uh, well, the boat is going to be about 6 inches deep, 14 feet long, and approximately 3 feet wide. Uh, we'll have some uh, odd skid decks on. It'll be a full fledged paddleboard. And what kind of wood is it, Ron, that you're using? That, that, that's the wood we're using for this paddleboard is a comey plywood. It's a marine plywood. It'll be completely encased in fiberglass. The kit is uh, the boat is a kit built and it's manufactured by Chesapeake Lightcraft on the East Coast. They make a number of kits, including sailboats, paddleboards, uh, pulling boats kayaks, canoes. Right now, well, the reason we're starting with the kit right now is that we would like to be able to have the public come in and on their vacation spend four hours a day, build a paddle board for a week, and then the second week of their vacation, go paddle it. Wow. It's the ideal place for that to happen. What a great idea. <laughs> and that's actually one of the other questions I was going to ask you is how many hours, of course you're busy tracking that right, right. now, but have you guys projected the number of hours in it? Right now, there's about uh, eight hours involved with this, uh, getting the long panel set up. I'm um, estimating it'll be another 40 hours worth of work to complete the boat. And that would depend on how many people are working on it. If uh, a father and a son or a mother and a daughter wanted to come in and, and make one, is that something that I might believe, be? Yeah, I, I really believe a family could build one of these easily in a week. Wow, great. And they could come in on a Monday morning and walk out of it on a Friday afternoon. Wow. Well, I've been involved in boats when I was a kid. My father and I built a hydroplane in my bedroom when I was in high school. I spent my summers in, in your bedroom. In your bedroom, a hydroplane. I slept on the couch. You slept summer. on the couch. How <laughs> big was this? Oh, it was about nine feet long. I wow. Just barely got it out the door of the bedroom. And what was the inspiration for that? I mean, just, just wanted to have a boat. And how old are you? I was about uh, fifteen. Fifteen years first old. Built. Yeah, first boat we built. And where you have any pictures of when you launched this? No, no, it's many, many. That's the where was it? It was in St. Louis, Missouri. Wow. So we spent our we spent our summers boating on the Missouri River. I was a friend of mine had a small sailboat and I had a hydroplane. And we go out there and just stay on the islands overnight on the weekends and kind of and uh, the Tom Sawyer Huck Finn. Yeah, it was a lot of fun. And then uh, we moved to Kentucky and we bought a sailboat down there, an old one on Kentucky Lake for many years. And used to bring it down here to Keys. Yeah. And then we moved down here because we want to sail. Right. So I've well, been involved in boats since I was 15 years old. So from the big Mississippi to the big Appalachia. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. It sounds like what I hear is that uh, childhood experiences with boating are very, very important. They are. We hope to get. My goal would be to have a fleet of small sailboats out here built by the kids in Appalachia College School. In each class, we'll have a project boat label with their class and their names on it. They come out here and sail it anytime they want. Wow, that would be great. That would be fantastic to get the kids involved in that right. hands-on type of thing because I do know the museum is very much about hands-on. I notice you're wearing a t-shirt, well, has Outward Bound on it. Uh, do you have a background with out, out, Outdoor Bound? Well, I was an out, I was outward. a climber and rock climber since I was in college. Ah. And uh, when I retired from uh, my original job went part-time at a consulting engineering firm. I worked for Outward Bound in Colorado and North Carolina for four summers leading rock climbing and mountain climbing expeditions. And that was with what age group? That was everywhere from about 15 to 21 plus adults. So you've adult got, you got a background in working I, with... I taught uh, rock climbing at Murray State University. Good. Hey, those are unusual looking white things. What are those? Can you tell me what those There's rings are? Orange PVC pipe cut in rings and take a slot cut in and make nice cheap clamps. Oh, very clever. You can't have too many clamps when you're building anything. Right, I can no see. Way you have too many clamps. <laughs> and the and the clamps are uh, to hold the pieces together while they're draw while the epoxy is drawing. Correct. Okay, and that's great. You have some traditional clamps there, but I also see that you've got some um, some of those. Uh, 
PVC clamp. So that's a very clever tip right there. Is uh, just a regular Schedule 40 PVC with a slit cut on one side, and that works well for clamping that con that weight of material. Good. And what's the goal to complete today? Right now, we're going to start, we've completed clamping the shear clamps on the sides. Uh huh. Being part of the supports at the top. This right. is the underside of the deck, the top deck. We're going to put fiberglass right. on the other side of the top deck today. Uh huh. Dry overnight. I think the, the board is actually going to wind up being. Yeah. Right. So, so say it's basically yeah. space yeah. how I see how you're going to shape this to board it. Yeah. Then we got then we have these bulkheads that go in the middle of it. Right. For fit the deck in the bottom. In between. Yeah. And then there's stringers that go this way. Oh, so okay. it's, a, it's a very strong box. But the only thing you can't, the only thing I found out you can't do with these wood things is run them always with this box. So this, is, this is going to be as light as a regular paddleboard, perform just as well. And the thing, the nice thing about it is it's going to be a heck of a lot better. And you know what I really like? I have to get this in here. Okay. It's renewable. It's a renewable resource sure. that you're using. Of course, not the epoxy, but the the, the basic material is a renewable resource. It's not a petroleum product, is what I'm saying. Uh, I'm not sure. Some epoxies used to be. I'm not sure this is. But as far as that goes, yeah, it's, it's fairly, it's, it's the, the basic material of the wood is, is uh, renewable. It looks to me like it would be fairly buoyant in the airspace. Yeah, there's a breather tube on here, but it's, it's going to be really light, very buoyant. And uh, the other thing is you can fix it. Ron, for those that might be concerned, tell me about the epoxy that you're using on this. I mean, if you're going to be bringing, we have a well-ventilated um, shop here, but is that epoxy, it dries fairly quickly? It's, you know, with some people, when they think about epoxy, they think about the really, really, um, you know, um, hot, volatile stuff that they used to make. Yeah, that's what I used to use. That's, no, this stuff is really benign. Uh, it cures in about 24 hours, but it really takes a couple of weeks to cure fully. But you can touch it and, and use it in 24 hours. It doesn't give off fumes. You don't have to wear a mask or anything. You only need to okay. use a water plus you can develop an allergy. Right. You're an allergic reaction to it. But it's really, unless you glue your eyelids together, it's really not going to bother. You just don't want to get it on your skin. Okay. You know, but so uh, it's as perfectly. Far as the glues go, it's, it's probably safer than the super glue by the market in the store. Okay. And that's fiberglass, and that's the other reason you wear gloves there, right? Yeah, well, the cloth is really not the body too much. Right. Not, unless you start tearing Right, cutting it. Or it's not fried. Right. It's okay. Not All right. Well, you guys go to it. I'm going to be filming little bits and pieces of you. This is, i got to talk to, uh, talk to uh, Augusta uh, about printing up a logo of, of, uh, of the Maritime Museum. Uh-huh. And putting yeah. it on putting the it board? On, on part of this, yeah. Absolutely, we so I need think it's to. Really nice addition to we can it all. Is that Wes peeking yeah. in on us? Yeah. We have an observation window over in the shop where visitors can come and they don't have to come into the shop, um, but they can watch the activity here. We had a couple come in, a family come in yesterday and asked how much it would cost to build one of these. Well, the cost of the kits, you told us, at least at, at retail, is $800. That's just going to be at least $1,500 for a completed kit and, and somebody doing it. But, you know, compared to buying a high-end professional panel bar, which is what this is, it's, it's, it's just cheap, cheaper, plus the fact you get to use it yourself. Now, what about paddles? <laughs> the paddles don't work. The paddles are wood, but uh, I'm not sure the are there plans are to make it? Uh, are there plans? I mean, that'd be fun to make them. I make my own kayak paddles. They, yeah. They come with the kit. Well, they oh, got it. Have one over there. I think it comes with the kit. Huh. I guess we're ready to start mixing them. Spreading. From the middle out? Pardon? From the center out? Yeah. I guess that's the way I would do it because I'm going to get to the end and hopefully get the bubble wound that way. So those pumps you're using, Ron, uh, you called them what? Metering pumps. Metering pumps, and that means what? Each one of them gets, gives you a fixed volume for each stroke of the pump. Okay, because there's a there's a ratio, I guess. You have well, to have this pump is half the size of this one. Okay. You look at the pump stroke. Right, but there's as far as mixing the two components together, there's a ratio you're supposed to right. do, or there's two two to one, two resin to one of the 
part. Okay. Two ra two resin each. to one hardener. And that makes it really simple for people to right. mix up a small amount. And it makes it also foolproof. You know, they really do. It That's really does right. set up well. That way you don't complain to them later about their product. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> because of ours. If they supply the pump, then it's their problem. Their fault, not ours. <laughs> Let's see what happens as you mix that. Nothing. I know you got to keep mixing it. Nothing. You're not going right. to see a color change or anything. No, it, it'll get the stuff I use. The system three epoxy gets pretty warm. This hasn't. I don't know as much heat generated by this. Thing. Right. I was going to ask you about that plastic solar cup. I guess it doesn't affect it. No, but I, I wrote you in the website. We need to start saving. Everybody needs to start saving their uh, margarine tubs. Right. Oh, Those are great, and you can crack the epoxy out of them. They're recyclable. You the what kind of them. tubs? Because we're into recycling. Those margarine, margarine, margarine tubs. Margarine tubs, yeah. better yeah. than butter. Can't believe it's not butter. Yeah, those kind of things. Because you can crack, you can just crack them, and the epoxy will come right out of them. And you reuse huh. them. Okay. Yeah, I, mean, I used to be on the board of directors of Recycle Now in Paducah, Kentucky. We founded a big recycling company up there, and I got, got into it big time. I've always been signed on kind of an environmentalist, but. Uh, you know, we need to have a couple. I need to talk to them. We need a couple of waste packs here for recycling cardboard and plastic. Okay. And, uh, I try like this wood stick. I've been using that for three days. I mean, there's no reason to throw it away. Right. It's not broke yet. No. That's the other thing I wanted, we need to do on this on this project here is make it as green as possible. Oh, I'm all for that, and I've been I've been kind of hounding George about that for a while. Uh, I, I'm going to also. <laughs> so I'm glad I have a teammate. <laughs> yeah. I'll tell you, when we started the thing in Paducah, I, our trash got down to about 10% of what we threw, we threw away, 10% of what we did originally. 90% of it was recoverable. Very mm -hmm. nice. In fact, you go over to Panama City, there's a place where it sells uh, really nice patio furniture made out of old plastic. It'll last yeah. forever. Neat. It's really nice stuff. Smart. Instead of filling up a, a landfill. I never understood that. Melt it down and make something else out of it? Yeah, I mean, they, they got some nice furniture over there, too. But, uh, yeah, there's another guy. I want to get a small boat sailing club started around here, too. There's several small boat sailors here. There's Ready? some wooden boats. I could see a fleet of little sailboats like that out here come in and come out around for 30 bucks for about half a day. Exactly. It's about to take it out the river for a rowboat or something like that. Yeah, I'd like to see. It. I'd like to love to see that. I, I guess I get my wife so they get too enthusiastic about things sometimes. Mm -hmm. Oh no, no, that's never a <laughs> that's never all. a fault. You no, know, I, I do, do believe though that this this museum could be a huge part of the economic future of this town. You know what's being launched right now? You know what a lolly is, right? Uh, the oyster style of oyster boat. I I've heard the term, but I haven't. I don't really know. I don't really know. It's, it has a, 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 a swept-up bow. It's simple. It's pretty much a homemade wooden boat. Okay. The art of making those is being lost. For that. There's a guy that uh, a friend told me about. He was up on 12th B Street and B, or 12th and A, somewhere 12th and Water Street, or from wherever it is down there. Uh -huh. He used to build those things around here. He's in his 90s. Really? And I don't know his name. I need to get his name. But he'd be somebody we ought to. Enlist to come down here and maybe help us build one. Give us, you can't physically do it. Okay. So you come down here and give us, you know, some, pick his brain. Yeah. And help us build that one. would be wonderful. That's what I'd like to see happen. And you're engaging people yeah. at all different levels. And that's real important. I don't think it's like You know what I would love to see is when the people come across the bridge over there or are going across the bridge to East Point, they look out and they see half a dozen small sailboats and rowboats out there with people in them just yes. scooping around. Yeah, this, this, is this is an easy one. We'll get the one that's got more parts. <laughs> <laughs> just have more directions. And so more this time. is a, this fun. is a starter kit, huh? Well, really, it is. This is the simplest one. Know, you know, and, hey, 
that's where it started. Yeah. It really is. That's why I want to start this one. I thought, man, this is a great family project. I'm glad George bought this one. I thought, panel board, hey, there's all kinds of neat stuff we can do with that. There's all yeah. kinds of families that can come in and how that clamp in there. Uh, but, uh, so 24 hours for this to dry. 24 hours, yeah. So will it be dry enough tomorrow morning with all this wet weather we've had? Yeah, yeah it doesn't require moisture. It just requires time. It's a catalytic reaction. Oh, okay. It has nothing to do with character. Well, if you, do a re if you have real cold temperatures, the card is slower. Right. But it really doesn't have anything to do with moisture or anything. Good. Well, we're looking forward to that. What kind of glue is this that you use? It's just the epoxy. It's the same epoxy put oh, on here. Oh, the thick okay. it with some celluloid, fine celluloid. Just, just to give it a body? Binder. Yeah, just to give it some body so it doesn't run all over the place. Right. And, uh, it makes a nice filler, too. Maybe you need to fix something up. I see they puzzle jointed that piece there, yeah. right? That's yeah. so they could have a, a shipping size. Yeah. But, How do uh, they ship these? You know, they ship it in five cardboard boxes. But it's UPS or? I don't know. Now, Usually it's UPS. This you had to make in, your, in the shop, right? No, I came with it. Really? Yeah, all the parts come with it. That's cool. So everything but the clamps and I guess the epoxy maybe? Or the epoxy comes with it. Epoxy comes with the it too? Brushes, see, the, the plastic, the brushes, uh, the mixing cups, things like that, rags, things like that don't come with it. But, you know, it, 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 does, it has everything. It has all the parts you need to build it. Right. So you just have to supply some glue and yeah. elbow grease. Mm -hmm.